This is a poem by MTS Darker, and it's one we're going to be using today for looking at developing detail of your uh, poetry analysis, especially when it's an unseen poem, when you're having to work images out and work ideas out. So first of all, if we read it through, so it's called How to Cut a Pomegranate. And if you haven't um, ever encountered a pomegranate before, I've put a picture of one in the top corner and you would um, really understand the poem more if you stopped at this moment and Googled some pictures of pomegranates because it's going to talk about the inside of a pomegranate, which is very distinctive looking. So now you know what a pomegranate looks like. Let's look at the poem. Never, said my father, never cut a pomegranate through the heart. It will weep blood. Treat it delicately, with respect. Just slit the upper skin across four quarters. This is a magic fruit, so when you split it open, be prepared for the jewels of the world to tumble out, more precious than garnets, more lustrous than rubies, lit as if from inside. Each jewel contains a living seed, Separate one crystal. Hold it up to catch the light. Inside is a whole universe. No common jewel can give you this. Afterwards, I tried to make necklaces of pomegranate seeds. The juice spurted out bright crimson and stained my fingers. So if we look back at that then, what we're going to do is try and make sure we understand the meaning of the poem and then to select those short extracts, those short quotations that we can talk about in a little bit more detail. So the first person we hear about in the poem, look at who this is, okay, and think what a father might represent to this speaker. Now we get the impression that this is an autobiographical poem that may be darker and the speaker are the same person. So what could the father represent? What do fathers represent to people generally? And so this is maybe a voice of authority, a voice of wisdom, a voice of advice, a trusted voice that we're hearing first. And we hear this instruction, okay, never cut a pomegranate through the heart, it will weep blood. So straight away we go from this um, From this literal idea, this literal instruction, never cut a pomegranate. And then it starts to get a little more metaphorical here. It talks about not just slicing this fruit open, but not cutting its heart because it will weep blood. So if the pomegranate is being portrayed as alive, what might that say about the value of this fruit? It's going to come back at the end of the poem, really what the pomegranate signifies to the speaker. So here we have this idea of um, it being a living, breathing, growing, alive thing, and capable of crying. Okay, so we've got, you know, tears of blood. And the speaker's father gives another instruction to treat it delicately with respect. So the pomegranate is being introduced as a um, an object to be respected, to be valued, to be almost revered. Okay, if you revere something, you hold it in a kind of really high respect, almost religiously high respect. Then The father carries on talking. Just slit the upper skin across four quarters. This is a magic fruit. Okay, so this particular line is important. Think about the connotations of magic. Okay, what connections and associations are you getting with the idea of a magic fruit? You've also got this end stop here to make you pause before you go on to the next line. So the sentence doesn't end, but this end stop, that comma there, pauses you to think about the value of this fruit. So when you split it open, be prepared for the jewels of the world to tumble out. And this 
is an interesting idea. The one I've just put in square brackets. Because the whole line reads, be prepared for the jewels of the world to tumble out. So again, think what method, what technique Darker has used there. Are these segments, are these pieces of the pomegranate that fall out when you break it open, are they really jewels? And more importantly, are they the jewels of the world? You know, these are not just regular um, precious gems. These are the jewels of the world. But look at what has been done technically here. You've got a line break there, okay? So the line is enjambed. The line has got enjambment in it, which means that you read it as be prepared for the jewels of the world to tumble out. But if you look, ending that line there ends that line on that note of kind of warning almost, that sense of anticipation created by be prepared. And it leaves you just a little bit kind of waiting to see what you've got to be prepared for on the next line. So you're prepared for the jewels of the world to tumble out, more precious than garnets, more lustrous than rubies. So you've got that repetition there. So repetition of the same word or word on successive lines or clauses, anaphora or anaphora. And that repetition gives you these two other red precious stones. And it's also as if this pomegranate has got a light in it. So think of all the connotations of light as well. Okay, this, this has lit as if from inside. Each jewel contains a living seed. Now we've come across this idea of the pomegranate being alive before, haven't we? It's up here. So when you're annotating a poem, try and group images and ideas together to remind you to talk about them all in one go. Okay, so you're building up some points about the poet presents the pomegranate as a living thing. Okay, then you're collecting your evidence. Now we're back here to jewellery or jewels and light. And the kind of size of the importance, the magnitude of the pomegranate. So we've got the crystals relating to our garnets, rubies, jewels of the world. We've got light relating to our lit from inside. And we've got our whole universe relating to our jewels of the world. Okay, so we've got the pomegranate here represented in three ways. Okay, as a living, breathing thing, as being connected with light, and being connected with cosmic imagery and value. Okay, and cosmic is to do with the stars, the universe, the heavens. Okay. So in her father's first advice, he really presents the pomegranate as something very special and, and finishes with no common jewel can give you this. Now, because um, we're getting this scenario, this scene, where we've got father advising daughter, and then what goes on to happen in this third stanza, I'm going to assume that Darker or the speaker is a young girl at the moment she's getting this advice. And she says, afterwards, I tried to make necklaces of pomegranate seeds. So she takes his metaphor and she tries to enact it. She tries to carry it out, to enact it, literally. So she tries to make jewellery out of the pomegranate seeds, but the juice spurted out, bright crimson, stained my fingers, then my mouth. So there's almost this kind of childlike delight in enjoying the fruit. Okay, so you've got the beauty of it and the potential of it and the taste and the enjoyment of eating it, getting covered in juice, it all dripping everywhere. 
And it also shows her innocence. Okay, her father tells her this is like this is like a jewel, so she thinks let's wear it. You might also, if you wanted to go a little bit deeper, you might think about why people wear necklaces, why people wear jewellery. Well, they, they decorate themselves with things that um, show, show off their identity, that, that enhance their appearance, that say something about who they are and what they like. So if you hold on to that idea that we get later in the poem of what the pomegranate represents... We have darker or we have the speaker kind of taking this incredibly important fruit and realising how essential it is for her identity and wanting to wear it, wanting to combine it with the way she looks, the way she is, to celebrate its appearance by wearing it on her as jewellery. And that that can be quite a significant comment about identity and um, place and belonging. And then my mouth. I didn't mind. The juice tasted of gardens I had never seen. Voluptuous with myrtle, lemon, jasmine and alive with parrot's wings. The pomegranate reminded me that somewhere I had another home. OK, flip over to the next page. She's covered in juice, but she says, I didn't mind. The juice tasted of gardens I had never seen. Voluptuous with myrtle, lemon and jasmine. Myrtle, lemon, jasmine and alive with parrot's wings. The pomegranate reminded me that somewhere I had another home. And this is where Darker really brings together the significance of the pomegranate to her. So if you look here, what technique is that? Okay, does the juice actually taste of gardens? And more importantly, these are gardens she's never seen. So think about it. At some point, biting into this fruit makes her think of this beautiful place that she's never been to, but she knows about instinctively, that somewhere within her Voluptuous kind of means um, really kind of full and uh, appealing to the senses, sensual, kind of really luxurious. Okay, And this garden is full of myrtle, lemon and jasmine. All these kind of plants and fruits that are exotic if you've been brought up in England. You know, we don't walk down the street and see a lot of myrtle, lemon and jasmine growing. But in a much hotter climate in a different country, this might be an everyday um, experience. And even more evocatively, the gardens are alive with parrots' wings. Now, we've had the idea of things being alive before now, the idea that there is a sense of life captured within the pomegranate. Now, we get the idea of this exotic, lively, energetic beautiful metaphor that this garden is alive with parrots wings think of all the things you connect to parrots and parrots being free rather than in cages being able to kind of um, fly around a garden and this experience this kind of deeply instinctive moment she has when she's eating the pomegranate reminded her that somewhere I had another home. So somewhere there is part of her identity, her culture, her personality, her family, her background, which has this deep appeal of somewhere else, somewhere hotter, somewhere where myrtle, lemon, jasmine and parrots are all there in gardens she's never seen. So this is, becomes a poem about belonging, a poem about finding your identity, finding your place. And Darker uses the pomegranate as a symbol of home and identity. Now, in terms of writing this up, first of all, make sure that you've understood the idea of the 
um, poem, everything that's been said on this video. Then I'd like you to look at the following points. So for number one, choose three short quotations And I'm going to say all patterns of quotations, okay? Patterns of images. And explore why these are effective. Okay, and I'm going to also remind you that you need to mention methods techniques wherever you can. Okay, so the reason I'm saying patterns of images is you might want to develop some of those ideas. You might actually want to do three short paragraphs for your answers for ideas. So you might start with that idea of darker presents the pomegranate as alive, as one topic sentence then collecting together those ideas and those quotations. Your second one might be um, darker presents the pomegranate as a precious stone, okay, or as valuable or as magical or as, you know, kind of be, um, cosmically important. So think about how you could build up those points. And remember that you're going to use short, embedded quotations, mention methods wherever you can, and that you're going to really add value as a reader. Okay, You're not just going to repeat what's in the question. The second thing you might do is choose one form and structure point. Okay, and that is talking about the um, ideas of end stop, enjambment, line break that we talked about. Um, and I'm just going to put and explore the effect of this. Okay, when you're talking about a poem, it's really important that you recognise that this is a poem. It's not a short story. It's not a play. It has things going on in it which are only found in poems. And therefore, if you can include one point maybe about the line break at the prepare point or the idea of, um, you know, even here we've got tasted of gardens and then the, the kind of follow-up I have I had never seen. So introducing the idea of gardens and then moving straight through that she connects this kind of idea of longing and, and wanting to see that garden. Have a little go at the um, form and structure point. It's slightly more difficult to do, so we'll just have a practice of it. OK, um, good luck. Uh, just have a have a play with the poem. Bye now.